Hello and welcome back to another episode. Now today, as you can probably tell by the music, we're continuing sort of a Bond theme for the week by playing one of my favourite James Bond games and that is James Bond The Duel on the Mega Drive. Now this particular game is an interesting one because it's actually a Timothy Dalton James Bond game and um, people tend to forget about it for one reason or another uh, they seem just to, to forget that this was this, that this happened. Um, when they're talking about Bond games um, people really only tend to think about Goldeneye and its legacy. But this one for me is very special not just because it's got Timothy Dalton in one of my favourite Bonds but also because for a little while this actually was a surrogate Goldeneye for me. Now let me explain. Um, as I've said in a previous video, my brother and I at times got a little bit frustrated because we were, I suppose, behind the times when it came to getting hold of an N64. Uh, and therefore, you know, it, it, for me it was the beginning of high school, the first couple of years of high school, and, and it seemed like everyone else was experiencing this amazing new console, this 3D, 3D graphic capability, uh, the, uh, the, the world, for example, in Super Mario, and also the, uh, the game player Goldeneye. And um, every morning, oh, watch this, apparently you have to rescue the hostages by uh, poking the ladies with your gun. Um, anyway, <laughs> every morning, uh, in particular, this guy called Nick would come in uh, while we were waiting to register and uh, waiting for the teacher to, to turn up and he'd be there regaling the class with his latest adventures on Goldeneye. So, you know, what he had done in the dam level, uh, how he had figured out the, uh, the objectives in the silo. Uh, and of course, at the time, I didn't really know what he meant, you know, because I, I hadn't played the game really yet. But I knew that I was getting a little bit jealous, basically. Um, and I, uh, I found myself saying something really stupid, as people often do at that age. Uh, you know, you don't want to be left out, so you make a slightly exaggerated claim. Uh, and I said, yeah, well, uh, I've got an amazing uh, James Bond game too, Nick. It's called uh, James Bond The Duel on the Mega Drive. You should uh, come give it a go. And one evening, one fateful night, Nick came over to play it, because everyone was like, ooh, the duel sounds really interesting, you should play that, Nick. And so he did, he came over. And we had a lovely meal, um, you know, watched cartoons or whatever, and then went upstairs to play this game. And, um, well, needless to say, Nick wasn't too impressed, uh, because it's not really, a, it doesn't really compare to Goldeneye. Obviously, the gameplay is entirely different. Duck. Uh, the gameplay is entirely different. The, um, the, oh, the, uh, the, 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 the music, everything is just not as good in some ways as Goldeneye. But it, it has its own charms, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Anyway, he, he, he went home sort of going, how, how could you possibly compare this to Goldeneye? And was sort of, you know, telling everyone at school, all our friends. And so for a little over a year, I had to sort of be, uh, live down the, uh, the ribbing and the, 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 the jokes that people made about about Goldeneye and, and me and me daring to compare the two games. Um, and I can sort of see why, you know, I, I made an exaggerated claim and I sort of deserved it. But, um, but I went on, you know, over the course of that year, me and my brother got really quite good at this game. You wouldn't know by how I'm playing today, but we did because it, this was the Bond game that we had. And, um, and it's, it's pretty good. It's actually reminiscent, I think, of a, um, of a Shinobi game. In terms of how the uh, how the, the the controls feel, how the weapons behave, uh, actually the level progression itself is uh, very reminiscent of Revenge of Shinobi, in my humble opinion. Um, not least because of, for example, you hear you start off on a ship, then you go into a forest, then you go into a, a cave, and eventually you sort of end up in this sort of laboratory type type area. Um, exit. Oh no! See if I can get to the. So it feels a little bit like Shinobi, not least also because actually it's a completely unforgiving game in terms of its gameplay. You've probably already noticed things like when you get shot, you go flying back, and if you get shot in the wrong place, you just keep on flying off, uh, off um, cliffs and platforms into pits, and so it can get a bit frustrating. But it demands, therefore, that you are you become good at the game. So that's one of the reasons why I love it is that is it is. Uh, it's got its own character. Um, but also I love things like the animation. So for example, if you watch, um, 
when Bond changes direction, he actually swaps uh, the hand in which his gun is, which is quite cool. Sometimes, I kid you not, I would sit there for, for you know, a good 30 seconds just swapping the gun, the, uh, gun in my hand, um, or between my hands. Um, I also quite like things like this, so you can hide in alcoves from baddies. So it's got, you know, it's got little things that make it, make it a pretty good game. You just have to stick with it. And, uh, and I have to say, <laughs> we had no choice. So that's one of the reasons, that's basically the reason why it's one of my favorites. Um, but I can completely see why uh, Nick wasn't impressed. I can completely see why people sort of mocked me for that year, because it just, it's not the same experience at all. Um, and therefore, actually, not only do I have a, a love for the game, because, ah, because of nostalgia, but also I, um, I have a love for the game because of the lesson it taught me in terms of making exaggerated claims. <laughs> so, um, it's one of those things where, uh, yes, it's kind of like a, it's, like, it's a definitely a, a game that I have a complex emotional response to. Um, but, uh, I mean, we've all been there, you know, and actually, if you've ever done similar made exaggerated claims about something let me know you know comment below i'd love to hear your stories because um surely i'm not alone oh is that um that is that's uh voodoo man i forgot what his name is now voodoo man um rising up out of the ground anyway sorry yeah i'm sure we've all been there so please do let me know uh, below but i suppose in a nutshell i'm here to say if you ever get a chance give this game a go um it like that can be very frustrating but when you get beyond its its quirks it's actually pretty it's a solid game the music's pretty good and uh, and it can be a very satisfying experience especially when you finally ah, finally <laughs> progress beyond that that one point where you kept on getting getting your backside handed to you uh, and in that way this game really was the the game that 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 I suppose taught my, my brother and I to be patient. Um, you know, we we were having to be patient in order to get an N64, and, and in fact, we didn't know it was coming. It happened to come. You know, one Christmas we got our N64, and it was amazing. It was a wonderful experience, and uh, I wouldn't, in that sense, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have got it any sooner than we did. Um, but it, it taught us an important lesson in terms of patience and also getting the most that you can out of what you've got. Uh, and in that sense. This game, <laughs> this game is a son of a gun. Um, let's leave it there for now, I think. Uh, but nonetheless, hopefully you've got a good sense of what it's like to play. And also actually, to be honest, why it is that I love it. There's the, it's, it's not a perfect game, but it's, it's pretty good. Um, and hopefully you've been there too. I hope you understand um, that that <laughs> the the strange ideas that you have, especially in high school, when it comes to to keeping up with your mates and the things that you'll that you'll say and do in order to not uh, be left behind. Yeah. So uh, with that sort of bittersweet note, uh, let's leave it there for today. But nonetheless, thanks as ever for watching, and until next time, do take care. Bye bye.